We've seen how to pass data to routes in the form of dynamic segments that were embedded directly within route paths. An alternative to that is to use query parameters, something that's usually a good idea of optional values instead of using dynamic segments. Choosing between the two approaches is not that simple though, as it depends on the particular situation. I want to add a new feature to our e-commerce application, the ability to offer a percentage discount. By passing a discount query parameter, being a number between 1 and 100, that discount should be applied to the product's price. Let's begin by adding the navigation that adds the query parameter from the product list component. Just so that we can still navigate with and without a discount, I will favor those who click a product's image and give them a 10% discount. So let's update the navigation within the clicked image method to add a query parameter. This is done by simply adding a query key consisting of an object of key value pairs. So right here, let's add the query object and specify a discount property with a value of 10. But what about the link that is added with the router link component? I'll leave that as is, but if you want to add a query parameter with this component, then you'll just have to do exactly the same as I just did, because the object that you pass to the components to attribute shares the exact same structure. If you're not using the vbind directive together with the to attribute and build the route path directly, then you can just manually append the query parameters as in normal HTML links. All right, let's just quickly open up the browser and verify that the query parameter is added to the URL when we click an image to navigate to a given product's details page. And if you look at the browser's address bar, you will see the discount query parameter being added. We're not actually doing anything with this query parameter yet, so let's get started on that within the view product component. First, I will add a discount data property, which will hold the amount of discount that should be applied to the price. So let's add the discount property here with an initial value of zero. Then I will implement a method for calculating the discount based on the percentage that is passed as an argument. I will then make use of this method a couple of times in a moment. So let's move down to the methods object and add a get discount method, taking the price of the product or rather the original price and a discount percentage. If the percentage is not set, I'll just return zero and otherwise I can calculate the discount right here. So original price times percentage divided by 100. Then within the created lifecycle hook, I'll use this method for setting the discount data property if there is a query parameter. So for that, I need to access the query parameter, which I can do by using the dollar sign route object that we saw earlier. This object has a query property containing an object consisting of key value pairs. So we can check if this object has a discount key and set the discount accordingly if this is the case. So if type of this dot dollar sign route dot query dot discount and this should look familiar because this is the same structure that we added within the product list component a moment ago so if this is not undefined then we can set the discount to the return value of the get discount method call and we'll pass the products price that we have from the data property and the this.$route.query.discount query parameter. Next we just need to change the template a bit to actually show the discount. So let's scroll up, find this part with the price, because here I want to say minus discount. And if no discount is available, this number will just be zero. So the calculation will still work in this case but I also want to show how much we are actually saving. So I'll add a span element with a VF directive, checking if the discount, whoops, discount is greater than zero, 
because in that case I want to display how much we're saving. So save and then some string interpolation outputting discount with the currency filter. All right, time to see if that works. So let's go back to the browser, refresh the page and click an image. So everything looks good and a 10% discount has been applied based on a query parameter. Let's try to click one of the related products and make sure that everything still works when there is no discount query parameter available. Wait a minute, that doesn't look quite right. The discount is still applied even though there is no longer any discount query parameter in the URL. This is because we are retrieving the discount from the query parameter initially within the created lifecycle hook and then setting the discount data property accordingly. But we're not reacting to when the query parameter changes or disappears. This is essentially the same problem as I showed you earlier with reacting to the product ID changes. So we need to do pretty much the same thing for the query parameter. You could add a watcher for the dollar sign route object, but I want to be more specific than that and define the path of the property that I want to watch. Perhaps you remember that we did this when adding watchers in the section where we dive deeper into the view instance. So back to the code. And we'll still be doing some logic within the created lifecycle hook because at the top of this hook, I want to add a watcher using the dollar sign watch method. The path to watch will be the dollar sign route object dot query dot discount. And then the callback taking the new value and old value as arguments. And in here, I'll just copy this part and modify it accordingly. So this last argument will be the new value argument. So the new discount. The last scenario we have to handle is if the product changes. We already have a watcher in place for this, so we just need to add a single line of code to update the discount when this happens. So let's modify the watcher that we have down here. Again, I'll just paste in the line that we had before. And actually this looks good, so we don't even have to change anything. The reason we need to do this is because the discount amount directly depends on a product's price. So whenever we change the product, we must recalculate the discount. And that should be all we need to do. If we perform the same test as before, let's just repeat everything, all of the steps. Then we should see that whenever the discount query parameter is removed, the discount amount is set to zero. So let's just try again. You see now we have a discount and clicking a related product and thereby removing the query parameter, we'll see that the discount is updated appropriately now. And that's how to use query parameters.